In this video, we're going to talk about the explanation for the rates of solubility lab that you did the week before. And this is going to kind of help explain why some of the things dissolved the way they did. The first thing we're going to talk about are solids and the factors that affect uh, dissolving for solids. In your lab, you notice that the hotter your temperature was or the higher it was, the faster the solute would dissolve. And the reason for that is as temperature increases, those molecules are going to move faster and they're going to collide with each other. And so as the solvent and the solute collide, that's going to allow for that dissolving. You saw this whenever you put the food coloring or the sugar cube in the water and you watched it spread quickly. And so again, the reason for that is as those water molecules are moving faster, they're going to allow for more collisions, which is going to increase the rate of dissolving. So higher temperature, faster dissolving for solids. And you've already seen this before with the solubility curve, but you notice for all the substances here, as temperature increases, their solubilities are going to increase as well. So it's not just the rate of dissolving, but also the amount that you can dissolve is going to increase as well. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is agitation. So anytime you're stirring, mixing, that's also going to increase the rate of dissolving. And the reason for this is when you're stirring or uh, mixing, you're bringing those solvent particles in contact with the solute. Best way you can think about this is if you've ever made Kool-Aid or sweet tea before, whenever you add your sugar, first thing you do is you stir it, and that helps it dissolve quicker. If you don't stir it, the sugar will still dissolve. It's just going to take a lot longer for that to happen. So stirring is going to allow those particles to, again, to interact with each other and allow for faster dissolving. The last thing that has an effect on solubility for solids is going to be surface area. Now, when we crush something, we're increasing the surface area of the solute. And what's happening there is by breaking into smaller pieces, you're allowing more exposed areas of that solute. By having more surface area exposed, that's going to allow for that water or the solvent to come in and be able to interact with those solute particles. Let's take a look at what's actually happening whenever you are dissolving. This is a diagram we've referenced before, but if you notice the solute particle is a solid in this moment. As the water molecules come into contact with it, those plus minus attractions are going to allow for the water to pull the solute away and break it down, and that's what we call our dissolving process. So what you're looking at right here is uh, sodium chloride dissolving, and this is what it looks like on a molecular level. So by exposing that middle area, we allow for more solvent-solute interactions. You can sh uh, see here with the sugar cube is we've colored marker on all sides. Well, as soon as we break it, all these white areas are the new exposed areas. All the red is still there, but by breaking it down, we're increasing surface area. Here's one more look at that. In the picture on the left, you've got the solute all clumped together in the solid state. And then on the right, as we break it apart, and decrease or increase that surface area, we're allowing the water molecules or the solvent to come within the solute and it's going to help interact. So you got to remember that dissolving is happening on the surface. And so by breaking that down, you're allowing for more surface area and then that's going to be faster dissolving. So remember the three things that have an effect for solids are going to be temperature, agitation, and surface area. As temperature increases, the rate of dissolution for solids is going to increase. As you stir, as you mix, that's going to allow for solids to dissolve faster. And then the last one, increasing surface area, is going to increase the speed of dissolving. Now for the next things we're going to talk about, this is factors affecting solubility of a gas. And if you notice, they're a little bit different than the way solids behave. So it's important to make note of how they're different. And the first way is temperature. If you look at the graph, on the right, you can already see for the solubility curves that this is different than what we've seen on the other graphs. For all four substances here, as temperature increases, the solubility is actually going to decrease. Now to understand this, we got to think back to the beginning of the year and what we know about gas molecules. Compared to a solid, gas molecules are moving much faster. The solids are just vibrating in place, but the gas is moving all over the place. Now, as we increase the temperature, those gas molecules are going to move faster. And if they move too fast, they're going to actually be able to escape the solution. And so when they leave the solution, they're no longer dissolved. So as you increase temperature, those molecules move faster and they're able to leave. Think about soda. Carbonated soft drinks 
are more bubbly if you store them in a refrigerator because what you're doing is you're lowering the temperature, you're lowering the speed of that molecule, and it allows it to stay within uh, the soda. On a hot day, if you leave your soda out, it ends up going flat because the carbonation is a result, uh, or leaving is a result of the temperature increasing, which allows those molecules to escape from going too fast. Now the final thing we're gonna talk about in this video is pressure. For gases, the higher the pressure, the more soluble the gas is. If you think again back to soda, whenever they put carbonation into the bottle at the plant, first thing they do is they apply a lot of pressure and then seal off that cap. And the moment you open that cap, you hear that release of sound, that's the carbonation escaping because you're decreasing the pressure. So if we look at this picture here, pressure is gonna force those gas particles into the spaces between the liquid particles. More pressure means more dissolved gas. If we're not increasing the pressure enough, then those gas molecules are actually gonna be able to escape. So remember, for gases, the higher the pressure, the more soluble it is, or the more dissolved it actually is. Again, just think about soda. As you open it, the CO2 is going to escape because it's no longer underneath that pressure. So there's nothing holding those molecules in. The last thing you want to note is pressure has no effect on a solid. Since those particles are already close together, we can't really combine them uh, any closer. So for pressure, we need to remember it only has an effect on gases. It does not affect solids.